What's happening now? <laughs> Buckets of water. Okay, here's my reaction video to Jake Paul's Fight Night Circuit. This should be fun. <laughs> I need an air horn. I need an air horn. So that what he's saying there to simulate fight night, I think is quite a bright idea, especially to within sparring. Athletes like Jake Paul aren't particularly experienced, no amateur experience. He hasn't really built up. He's literally just gone boom, straight in, sell out arenas. I think it's a really good concept to do, but whether to do it over a circuit, I'm not too sure. I know that once when one of our athletes was uh, training for fight camp, where it was literally behind closed doors, very weird atmosphere, everybody away from the ring who was there, like officials and everything like that. Literally no music were played in the gym. Everybody had to step yet, step away from the ring. Uh, so that was a great like kind of psychological kind of preparation for a fight. This is completely opposite where you got an athlete that is not as experienced going into the high levels and having to deal with like kind of the crowd noises and everything like that. So yeah, I think it's a good concept, but I'd probably do it for sparring instead of the circuit. August 6th coming up. As you guys know, I'm taking a half Seam Rockman Jr. This is the fight night circuit. Let's get it. Crazy. Let's go. So we're going to start off with the technical <laughs> Okay, so here we go. So we've got the timer. I'm not sure how long this timer is going to be. It's a 12 station circuit. Station one, jabs. When you're looking at physical adaptation, obviously you're just doing one side. So a massive imbalance between left and right. So I'd probably just do straight shots on that. It's good to incorporate like kind of fight style stuff with the physical circuit. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. Battle ropes look good. Good posture through that. Good rhythm. And also all body, instead of just going like that, I say like, don't be like a little mini chef. You know, get them full arms working to get some big waves, so that's good. You now we've gone from a very fast pace activity to the first climber. This first climber looks a bit of a grind. So if you're looking for a central adaptation, so looking to get that heart rate up into the red zone, I like noticed that it's not wearing heart rate monitor. If you're wanting to get that heart rate up to the red zone, uh, I'd be looking for like kind of faster actions in this. I do like running on the spot, skipping, battle ropes, stuff like that. Some fast paced actions. Now it's a minute and 20 in. It's done some quite aerobic exercises and then now it's doing hand cleans. This is something that I wouldn't advise. It's not getting most out of like kind of the conditioning aspect to it, but also the rate of force development. You know, the, it's not fast. It's not whipping the hips through and also doing it in them gloves, the wrists are coming back, high impact force is going through them wrists there. So now going out into the car park, it's got pull-ups. So you've got a real mix between aerobic exercise and strength exercises. It's either one or other for, for me and for what we do at Boxing Science, we look to try and optimize strength or optimize conditioning. This one's a little bit in no man's land. It's not getting the full benefits of either one, doing like light cleans, doing pull-ups and stuff like that. Here we go, some sledgehammers on the tires not every gym has this it's a okay exercise great for like kind of core strength and explosive strength through the core full body conditioning if you haven't got a sledgehammer i say go for the med ball what's happening now <laughs> buckets of water so this is like to prepare him for anything that's unexpected on fight night but he was expecting it uh, so i don't know what the reason is this is purely got to be for youtube but there's no way that I'm going to be doing this in, in the gym. Tie flips are a decent exercise. You just got to make sure that you're keeping that back straight, dropping down and making sure that everything's attacked with intensity rather than grinding through the movement. Again, it's going to sledgehammer, which is the conditioning exercise, but it's slow. Everything needs to be fast paced and intensity, fast repetitions to get that heart rate going. It's probably filling up with lactate now, as you can see with the slow jog over to the next station. So it's got somebody on the mic as we go, just calling him champ. Keep encouraging him, got the crowd going, which can increase your motivation whilst you're uh, whilst you're training. I think like playing good music is really important. It can get more out of you and also can reduce that rate of perceived exertion as well. So it's important to get a good playlist on whilst you're training. Don't have to get somebody a hype man with a microphone every time. So we've gone straight into back squats, similar to the hand cleans, not with true force and intense and not getting the most out of it. He's just had loads of water on him and he's getting a heavy bar on his back. That's quite dangerous. You can see that his hands 
are just opening up, often due to like kind of fatigue or not really coaching, not really coaching, and also like kind of poor shoulder mobility. You'll often see kind of boxers open up the hands there rather than gripping the hands and bringing the wrist straight. It's really important that you do this because get the wrist straight, getting the elbows directly under, activate the back muscles more, and this will provide a strong foundation for your squat. So essentially it helps you lift more, but make sure that getting full body, creating that strong foundation to help uh, increase the safety of the squat. We're going for, from squats into body punches. We're four minutes in now. Look at the technique. Look at the slow. It's slow. It's not fast repetitions. It's not what you're likely to see on fight night. If it goes like this slow on fight night, it's only going to go one way, isn't it? So it's all well and good getting like some boxing specific stuff done under fatigue. Look at this guy. Uh, we need this guy in the gym. <laughs> but it's got to be fast, it's got to be intent, it's got to look like the sport, else bad habits will start creeping in. If he starts throwing the punches that slow, not having his guard up, leaning over that front foot, is going to put him in a vulnerable position in the fight. You know, we put in some shadow boxing into our circuit sometimes. You've got to be fast, you've got to be explosive, it's got to be good technique. And we only do this for a short amount of time as well. Let's say something between 20 and 30 seconds doing it. Okay, so that's eight stations in five minutes. You'll be coming quite fatigued now. Another strength exercise built in. A lot of upper body fatigue in this. Doing it decline, so more upper body focus. He's dropping his hips there, so he needs to be keeping that core tense. Probably feet a little bit wider as well. Okay, so station 10 and we're on the ladders. Long ground contact times here. So again, that's building up probably bad habits and not really training the adaptation. If you're gonna use the ladders as part of conditioning drill, uh, something that we've been using quite recently with Terry Harper during the circuit. Very, very basic, fast pace, like ladder drills, so something like all these shuffles, then keeping it quite short duration. Uh, we've we'll been doing it with Terry somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds. Okay, we're on the sled. Six minutes in, it looks hard, it looks hard. I wouldn't wanna do it. Yeah, reverse slags, uh, reverse slags, reverse sled drags. Probably need to keep the shoulders pinned back. Probably do it from a, like using some TRX handles or something like that so you can get further away, keep a straight posture. Make sure that you're dipping into it as well. We've got the air bike. Again, there's not real intent in there. Is he really getting his heart rate up? Probably not because he hasn't got that RPM going. He's just grinding that one out. Would be very interested to see his heart rates on this. Jamie's looking at me like, what, what am I going to say on this? I've, I've, I've got no comment on this one. I don't even know what this is doing. Maybe head movement, tennis ball drops, reactions. Good, keeping concentration under fatigue. Again, it's not really as fast as reactions as probably what you need in the boxing ring. So doing something like uh, blaze pods, something like that, something that we've used before, looking at quick reactions. And it's also about decision making, not just about reaction times as well. And then wrestling at the end. How many guys has he got there? And I haven't seen this guy before. When you're looking at like kind of lactate circuits, doing something like a wrestle, will get that, that aster, spiking acidosis, but I think that it, his lactate levels there will just be through the roof. So he's done that in eight and a half minutes. So I don't know how much rest he has. He's straight into it. So he'll do three rounds of that. So it's eight and a half minutes, probably a bit, he said it a 30 minute workout. Not enough rest for me in that, in terms of like between each exercise, not enough thought in terms of like how the body will respond. It's just an absolute beasting session. Obviously this is something that probably gives him a lot of confidence going into the fight, which I think that is really important, especially at the level that he's fighting at at the moment. But for professional boxers or amateur boxers that are looking to try and get the most out of their physical and psychological preparation, I'd say there's a few things in there that you'd probably want to change. Uh, some of the exercise selections, modifications to the exercise, maybe shortening the round length. I'd say like if you wanted to make it fight specific, go for three minute rounds with one minute off, speed and intent, 
into the exercises, making it more aerobic based. If you, that's what you're going for, red zone adaptations, which most circuits are going for. Just making sure that everything has a place, everything has a purpose. And if you're going to throw buckets of water over each other, don't do a back squat straight after it. Hopefully you like this video, like this kind of video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. And I hopefully see you on the next video.